All right. Hi, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this special cooking demonstration, a special cooking class on Zoom, where we explore restaurants nationwide to bring you chefs at the forefront of Indian cuisine. The National Indo-American Museum, NIAM, builds bridges across generations and connects cultures through the diverse, colorful stories of all Indian Americans. We serve as a hub for the entire spectrum of the Indian American experience. We keep its stories live and relevant, and we use fresh and innovative ways to connect with our audiences. More information can be found at www.neum.org. I would like to thank our presenting sponsor today for our Taste of India, US Bank for their support. A few ground rules, everyone will stay on mute and any questions that you might have, questions from the chef, questions from the host, please type them on the chat box and we will look at your questions, we will respond to them. Detailed recipes of all everything that you see today here will be sent to you after the show. I will personally email every one of you with a list of recipes. All right. So today for our host joining us is Neem's own, our own very own board member, Raja Nadimpalli. Raja retired from Women's Health Resources, where she was an internist specializing in primary care for women. She has a keen interest in arts and history and has been with Neem for many, many years. Raja, thank you for joining us today and I would like to pass it on to you. Thank you, Jitesh. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining Neem today and we thank our sponsor, US Bank. Well, you know, this past year has been tough on all of us with COVID and many unforeseen difficulties. But we have changed our way of life in multiple ways, both professional and personal and coped with these challenges. Neem salutes and thanks all the essential workers who have kept this world going. Neem too has altered the way we conduct our programs. Since we cannot offer our popular street food walks on Devon Avenue, we have been offering these quality programs online. Our Taste of India series is not just a cooking show. It focuses on the history and stories of the chef's journey to their respective restaurants. Indian diaspora has a rich and varied collection of culture, history, and narrative, which Neem preserves for future generations. Today, National Indo-American Museum goes beyond the confines of cold Chicago land where it is based to warmer San Francisco to bring you the sixth program in this particular series and the first one for 2021. Hina Patel is the chef and owner of Besharam restaurant in Dock Patch, San Francisco. Hina was born in a small village in India, Bolsonaro. Her journey to San Francisco via London and opening Besharam, an award-winning restaurant, is, an, is a very interesting story. Besharam won the Eater Restaurant of the Year in 2019, less than a year after Hina took control. It so happens that Besharam is also my daughter's favorite restaurant. She lives in San Francisco and does takeouts all the time. It is my pleasure to introduce Chef Hina Patel, to tell us her story and also demonstrate her cooking skills. Hina, how are you? Uh -oh. Unmute. Hina, you're on mute. I will unmute you. Could you unmute your phone, Hina? Apologies, everyone. We'll get Hina to unmute her phone. And I see she has just done. Hina, we can hear you now. Go ahead. OK. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. So uh, like Raja, you said uh, how we accommodate ourselves during the COVID. Just before the COVID happened, I got recognized for this Ita Rasa. 
And that was heartfelt because I never considered myself as a chef before. I'm a home cook like you all. I never imagined myself of having a restaurant. So having that recognition, that accolade kind of proved myself that I can, I can believe in me and what I'm in my journey, what I'm doing, I can achieve more. And so when uh, Amita from Niam approached to me and I'm kicking off your 2021 culinary class, I got very excited because uh, National Indo-American Museum is uh, connecting my diaspora, my journey and documenting that. It's something nobody has done it before. And that's uh, that, that pioneering and our story is so important. It's more than an immigrant story and cooking, it kind of express of uh, where I'm from even from a small village or not going to culinary school or not having the chopping skills or don't even had the chef knife long time till I opened my restaurant. It's, it's proving that every step and documenting uh, with Nia, I'm very excited. Thank you, Hina. Um, could you please go over the menu today, what you're going to prepare uh, so that our audience will be appraised of that? Absolutely. Today, um, I kind of done what I grew up with, what I connect, but the food is easy, but very easy, like the ingredients we have in our house. It's yeah. easy to transport if you decide to prepare and take it on a picnic or something comes up, uninvited guest, and how you put it together. My mom used to do it uh, in Mumbai. We get in in eighties. We get the guests without telling us that we are coming. So those guests, my mom, very quickly how this uh, very comforting three items or three dishes put it together. And I still try to imitate my mom on this. And I thought I showcase this to you today. So we are preparing our very hearty uh, potatoes. And I'm going to cook it with our regular spices with the ginger, chili, garlic, onion, lemon juice. And I have put it together to show you. Then we're going to make Gujarati. We eat, we are king of the breads. And we take a lot of pride in the bread we make. And I'm going to showcase you the puri, which is the flat bread we fried. Mm. And it's amazing when you eat hot with this potato. And having the beef with the sweet and sour jaggery mango chutney is like a wow. I wish you are guys, I can share it with you right now. It's, uh, it's, it, bring, it will bring a smile to your faces. It's a crowd pleasure dish. Thank you, Hina. What, what are the other things that you'll be making after that? We're going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So that was... <laughs> Okay. Uh, so go, go ahead, get started, Hina. And as you're, as you're doing your first, making your first dish, uh, could you please tell us about your journey from Gujarat to Besharam? And Absolutely. what does Besharam mean? Yeah, so let me do both simultaneously so we don't run out of the time. I'm gonna start of making our dough for the puris. It's very important to rest our dough. So let's start on that. I took as the recipe is uh, Jitesh gonna forward afterwards, but we have our whole wheat flour with the salt, cooking oil, turmeric, and a little bit of chili. So one thing Raja, I like to uh, insist our home cooking, there is no rules. You just do what your heart says and what's in your pantry. If you don't have the whole wheat, use the millet flour or mix with some all-purpose flour with the ingredients you have. But there is, I say, just prepare and do something what you uh, feel, uh, like something put it together and you connect it. Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. So you mix it thoroughly first, the dry ingredients, yes. So it's very important, like when you mix it, I always use my hand. 
with my mom. I never grew up with the recipes, Raja. Mm. The, the famous, my mom sentence, eyeball it. It's like, you should know by the texture. So this is the yeah. texture. Like when you do it, it should hold the shape. That much oil you should put in your puri. Okay. It should be like a wet breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. It should feel dry. And now we're going to put our water to make this dough. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm giving you little measurement, but I never grow up. So every day I tell my staff to play with the texture or do it even if I have um, like a machine to put the dough together, I'd ask them to do it by hand because oh. that way they know how much water to put, when it's wet, when it's dry. And playing with your ingredients is important because it teaches you a lot. So yes. now you ask me, so the name Besharam, my restaurant, it's, it's the mantra I live with, Raja. Mm -hmm. And right from the beginning, witnessing my grandparents, my mom, uh, my sisters, like, and my children and nieces now, three generations. What I saw is uh, the women are mostly done what they've been told. They kind of lead the path what they lined up. And I, right for, and I feel like sometimes we lose our identity. So the Besharam means shameless. And that too, not only with cooking, but all my life, I wanted to do, not follow all the way the path that my mom told me to do or my parents decided to do, but not to lose myself. And uh, that says having this restaurant is giving me chance to explore my ideas my innovative creativeness to the food. That, that's really wonderful. Can you now tell us a little bit about your journey from um, Baltimore to via London to uh, Beishra? Yes, uh, my birth in a small village in Gujarat and my parents, they still live in uh, Ahmedabad, Marinagar, suburb of, uh, uh, in one of the city, suburb of Ahmedabad. Mm. And my education was Mumbai. So I done a lot of traveling every vacation, winter, summer vacation from Mumbai to Gujarat, catching that train. But I have a four memories growing up uh, around the field. My grandparents, my yeah. parents, they're all farmers. And I'm the second daughter of five sisters. So very beginning, we kind of realized that we had to please our parents. <laughs> As a Patel, my parents were very um, kind of way down for the dowry. They were worried, how are we going to pay? Because I'm from a middle class family. So we did not want to bother our parents. So we always try to achieve the best what we know. So they don't have to worry about us. So saying that, I got married as soon as I finished my bachelor degree. My dad said, now you're getting married. And I didn't argue. I didn't, because I didn't know any better. I always wanted to do, not to question their decisions. Uh, so I got married in 1986, met my husband in London and stayed uh, in London for five years. 1992, we moved here. We landed in Bay Area. Uh, we never left. My brother-in-law was living in uh, uh, Marine County and we stayed with him. And first 20 years uh, in this state, we run, I ran the flower shop and Paresh had a, my husband had a liquor store. So we were running the business without knowing ABCD of it. And that took a toll on us. Mm. That took the innocence out of us. And we grew very old, very fast. My hair were black that time, but we got mature very fast. <laughs> because as a first immigrant, you always try to survive. You always uh, want to fit in. And uh, 
without the friends, without the family, and some kind of I realized I enjoyed cooking and cooking the dishes what I grew up with. I miss my family less. And my friends and family said, oh, this is really good. Why don't you do it? And it's like I didn't have any means or know how to cook professionally. So in, nine, uh, in 2013, when I read off my business, I decided this is the first time I want to do what I enjoy the most. So I reached out to La Cocina incubation program and I said how I joined this. And I presented my dishes and that's how my culinary journey started almost seven, eight years ago. And dog fetch opportunity fell in and I thought, let me, let me go one more challenge. I like chaos in my life, I guess. So I took it as a, this space to run under my wing to see if I can run it. Or as a, mm. there is a lot of uh, COVID and that was all before COVID. So there is a other set of challenges yeah. uh, with the pandemic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right. This is our door ready, Kaja. So yeah. if you push it in, it, it should feel firm and it should make a little dent, but there is a little resistance to it. Mm. It's, not, it's not as soft, it's little firm dough. And now it's very important you rest this dough maximum 15 to half hour before we even start rolling our puris. So I'm mm. gonna cover it and then we start on our potatoes. Okay. Okay, that's great. These are my potatoes I washed. I did not find, so that because of COVID right now, sourcing is a little harder. I had a hard time finding the fingerling potato. Uh, Raja, because uh, I love fingerling potato when the summer comes, it's easy to cook. It has a crispy texture. I wanted to cook with fingerling, but with, I found a little round potatoes, baby potatoes, and those cooks as good. But so I'm substituting that because I had no hand today morning when I went to farmer's market. So I, I have a skin. I love the potatoes with the skin. And I, I washed it, I brushed it, I cubed it with the skin around. Uh -huh. And one thing, Raja, I like to, I, I will try to go with the recipe, what I'm suggesting you, but I will do what I felt right as I'm cooking. And if I miss anything, please feel free to tell me, hey, your recipe doesn't say that. So I will point out. No, just, just just go with the flow. What you feel is right at the moment. I think we all tend to do that a bit. Right. So this yeah. is my pan. Kind of, it's already very hot. Okay. I have little vegetable canola oil in there. Uh huh. So these are all our tempering ingredients. We're gonna do the, we're gonna start with the mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. And I let it pop. It's very important we let our mustard seeds pop. Right. We're gonna put some cumin. Cumin. We're gonna put some, our asapoitida, which is the hing. Hing or asapoitida, yes. Yes, we have our cinnamon stick. Some dried red chili. I like the texture of the chili and curry leaves. Curry leaves, yes, my favorite. Okay, for a pop, it will make. Then I'm gonna put some onion. Mm -hmm. Thinly sliced onions. Okay. I wish Raja all of our guests can smell this. The fragrance of the fried curry leaves with some onion. Now I'm gonna put some, little bit of garlic. Garlic. Okay. This has the minced garlic. 
Okay. And sesame seeds. And sesame seeds. Okay. Mm. Sesame seeds cook very fast. So we're going to do it last thing. That's an interesting combination. Yes. And I'm going to put all my potatoes. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to put some tomatoes in there. Mm -hmm. Start with the tomatoes. <laughs> Tomato face. Mm -hmm. Can I put some tomato face, Raja? Oh, paste too. If you don't have tomato paste, you can um, chop it or add more tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So, I add a little bit of water. Uh, Raja, there is an audience question. Um, oh, why, oh. why do we, why are we using the sesame seeds? It's a little crunch. The crunch of the sesame, um, it, it gives you a little vibrant taste. Sesame adds the nuttiness to the dish. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, sesame being used, but that's, uh, I will definitely try it next time. Yeah. I'm going to put some turmeric. Then I'll do some fresh ginger. Uh -huh. Chopped ginger, yes. Raja, the Gujarati cooking, we use a lot of fresh ingredients. We yes. as, as much don't make the food very heavy with the cream or with the butter. Right. We do use ghee once a while when we make the rice or bread. But our, all the shafts and sauces, it's all with the ginger, chili, garlic, fresh lemon juice, tomatoes, everything you grow in a farm. So this is all the food we grow in our farm and that's how I learned to grab the cuisine and all about how good it is for us. So who taught you to cook? So, uh, when I was uh, back home, when I was like growing up, we have to cook just, we know the basic cooking before we get married up. So, my mom cooked us very basic dishes. So, when we get married, we don't look like, uh, we don't know nothing about cooking. So, the whole idea for my mom to represent or how we look in a society. I, so back, I I realized later in my journey that I love cooking. I kind of like how I got connected with the guests or with the friends around me because I had to build up my own group of friends, my own family away from home. And cooking helped me to do that. But that's, that's awesome. Uh, when you get a chance, there is a question from the audience. They want to see those, the spices that you use up close. So if we could have a close up look at those, that would be great, yes. especially those seeds, mustard uh, seeds, etc. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is the black pepper. Let mm -hmm. me finish this, our, then we're gonna sure, put sure. some more water. When you can, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt. Black pepper and salt, okay. Yes, this is my salt. So all the ingredients, you wanna cook your potatoes, you're gonna put it in. And now I'm gonna put the rest of the potatoes in there. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, Raja, I wish we, you all can smell this, it smells so good. I wish I could eat it. <laughs> I wish I were there in San Francisco for many reasons. Oh, I can't wait to open my doors again. And... We'll be there when you open. Uh -uh. Mustard seeds. Mustard seeds. This has a little black mustard seeds. I okay. And the hing. Uh, 
Uh, I guess here you'll have to talk a little louder because it's the laptop. Yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Yes, what, what is that? Cumin seeds. Yes, cumin seeds. Yes. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. White sesame. Yes. The dried red chili. Dried red chilies. Tomorrow phone can be joined for it. Okay, go ahead, Hina. I think we've we've seen those. Oh, you good. So Hina, how do you characterize your cuisine? Is it fusion or do you still cook typically, typical Gujarati style, the way that your mother taught you? Hina, can you hear me? Hina? Oh. Hina, we are not able to hear you. I want to apologize to the audience. Her phone got hot, and that's why we are not able to hear her clearly. Oh. I think now we can hear Hina. Can you hear us now? Mm. Hina is logging or logging in with her phone again. I will okay. switch to All that right. camera soon. All right. Can you hear me, Raja? Now we can. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No, I can't hear Raja. It's okay. Uh, what you about your our, our phone? I can hear you very well. Can you hear me now? I can't hear anybody. So Raja. I'm going to roll out our dough. Uh -huh. So you make them into these little flat balls first, and then you roll them out, right? Mm. Okay. So I'm rolling out the puris. Uh-huh. So Raja, these are the small bits you roll out. Okay. About let's say a couple of millimeters thick, it looks like, right? There's only two of us here, me and Dina. No, no, no problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put the puri inside. Yes. Mm. All right, we can hear um, you finally. 
Yes. Oh, great. Oh my, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh no, no that, that, that's okay. okay. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the so the what I like to say about making the puri puff is very easy. You need a little bit high temperature, mm. and you need to rest your dough. Raja, because of our TV, uh, our faster, I done two doughs. One I rested for half hour and one is resting. So this is the one I done before the class I prepared. Okay. The same way, a little oil, turmeric, salt. And resting is important. Temperature is important. And when you put your puri in, you let it sit at the bottom. Don't touch it till it come itself. It should come by itself with the heat. It lift it up by the heat up there. Good. And when it comes mm. up, then you push that air around that how puri to puff up. You push it down. And after the puri puff up, mm. then you flip it mm. and you push again so the sides cooks. You have to make sure the side of the puri are cooked. And with this little help, each and every puri will puff up. Okay, that's great. Good and then one more thing, Raja, you know, the, the top side is little thinner because it's puffed up. The bottom is little heavy. It's the base of our puri. You need to push it down and let the base cook little more than the front of the puri. Uh, and then you drain. Draining is important. One more trick I learned by cooking. That's, that's how my hair is so white because I cook a lot. <laughs> you put the puri on top of each other even they are puff by staying keeping that they will stay puff uh, before you take it out to the table ah. like presentation in the restaurant is very important and mm. these are all the tricks I learned by doing okay. uh, keep, keeping it hot keeping the base little more firmer all okay. this will help to Keep puris puffer longer. They look lovely, Hina. Mm. I will show you a few more once we have the time. Okay. Raja, uh, this is our potatoes coming along. I did put little water to cook our potatoes. Mm -hmm. This, this is this chaff, this uh -huh. sabji does not have too much sauce. It's just a, our version of garlic fried potatoes. Okay. And I'm gonna put our chopped cilantro. Mm -hmm. As we say, we always eat with the eyes first, right? These potatoes are cooked perfect. At home, I just put it this in the center of the table and I garnish. But okay. you can prefer, you can scoop it out in a serving dish. Uh -huh. I'm gonna put our potatoes right here. Oh, they look so yummy. Mm. They cook very fast. And it's just so just satisfying to, it's like a soft, crispy tacos. You can fill up your bread between these potatoes. Mm. It's so good. So yummy. And now I love garnishing with the fresh ingredients, Raja. So, and I love, love, love my food with the raw onion. I don't eat anything without raw onion, but I, if you are very conscious, please skip this part. But <laughs> these are my sliced so red onion or the shallots if you can find. I love just a little bit grilling the uh -huh. lime. It will bring the little, um, hmm. the tar, little charness to the dish. And just releasing the juice just before serving. Mm. 
it's so good. And then I put more if somebody wants to have a little more. Right. And I love just how our spring onion. I'm gonna show you how to char them. So if I take our fresh spring onion or green onions uh -huh. and I put it here. And I just yeah. you don't need any oil or anything, just the heat. Oh. You can use the skillet at home to make this. The instant heat will wilted the greens, but it's also the charness. Whatever raja we put as a garnish, that's the first thing you're going to put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that it has a texture to it. So these are the few spring onion I garnish, I charred. And I'm gonna put that right a little bit gently and we pile it up. Oh, nice. I roasted my garlic in an oven. I love the sweetness of the garlic as it grows. Oh, yummy. I like the bite of the fresh whole garlic. And I add just here, there. My husband loves the fresh garlic. He can't get it up, so I always make sure there's a plenty in my dish. These are the chard. I just put it in a foil and put it for one hour. I forgot about it, but it cooks so for there. And then you can even squeeze it. Oh, it smells so amazing. Yeah. So that's our, I like the little spring. I know the cilantro, I don't go without Raja. Maybe I'm Indian, I guess. <laughs> this is my fresh cilantro. We all love cilantro. But if you like the basil, if you like the parsley, go ahead and use the herbs you like. No rules and regulation. So this is our stir fried awesome. potato no shark. But that looks awesome. And now I'm going to put this right there. There is an audience question. Um, yes. what, temperature, what temperature do we roast the garlic for one hour? So I put... I Aluminium foil 325 in the oven. How are we doing with the time, Raja? Can I show you a few more foodies or we running? Yeah. How are we doing? Sure, as okay. you're doing that, we have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So a, a, a few quick ones uh, would be, how do you characterize your cuisine? Uh, and what modifications have you made? Um, you know, my cuisine is Gujarati, mm -hmm. which is the east west part of uh, India. Mm -hmm. And I describe my Gujarati, what I serve is the street food, street food balanced, but uplifted. I'm cooking food what I grow up with, but mm -hmm. I also want to present it in a manner what my grandparents couldn't do it what my mom couldn't do it in her home kitchen. I wanna elevate my food and put it in a little humor. <laughs> there is a lot of uh, stigma attached that uh, Indian food is spicy, Indian food is too hard to cook, but I wanna simplify, I wanna make it fun. Uh, look at my dishes, Raja. Hmm. This is my plate, it says, I will step on her sari. I like my food and my, I make my plate with your humor, so is my food. Save the drama for your ama. So I serve all my food and I present the dishes with little lightness and taking out the stigma of the spiciness or too hard to cook. I say cook it without any boundaries. So cook what you desire, what you please, and then it will come out the trueness. Okay, that's I, good. Yeah, I had to kind of 
over the years, I live in California. So the ingredients, I can find some of the ingredients all year around. So I'm fortunate enough, and I don't have to sub most of, but I, I, I have so many flowers, so many types of potatoes. I didn't grow up in India. We, we had a very few variety, but over here I've been spoiled right. by the variety of the tomatoes, variety of the potatoes. And I love the texture of each and everything. So it, other thing, Raja, when we roll the puris, mm. you want to make sure you want to make sure the thickness is all around. Even, yes, it's, it's evenly even. thick. Mm -hmm. And there should not be any plate or anything because otherwise it will resist the puffing up. Okay. Okay. So that's the other thing you should remember. It should be evenly spread out. Okay. And also no split or little thing that right. not resist. Right. So it's little up. folds, yes. Uh, do you have, did you ever have to import any of the spices or do you get everything in San Francisco area? No, I do not get everything. <laughs> uh, so I love matya, which is the mm -hmm. very Gujarati famous cracker. Mm -hmm. I grew up with and that's my famous, instead of chips, I can eat matya all day. But over here, finding the flower, mud flower uh -huh. is not available. So I could not do that dish. Uh -huh. And uh, even coming from India, there is a, sometimes it makes the shipment, sometimes it's not. So it's not easy. Once I have it on the menu, like consistency is the best. Right. You had to be, you know, if, if your daughter comes one time, and she likes something, but if she come again, if she don't find, then I will make her upset. <laughs> so those are the few things I had to realize what I can put on my menu and what I can't. I understand. There is a question also about your uh, the your your uh, the bowls and the plates that you're using. Um, are the ceramics heat ceramics? Are they, they are ceramic? They are, are they from uh, company Heat H E A T H? No, so no. all my all my other they are from Heat Ceramics. Uh -huh. But the one, the Indian one, I have to order it, and the company is in Canada. And I design my what I want to play, oh, cool. uh, and then he put it on a plate. Okay. But all the other ceramics uh, is from uh, Heat. Yeah, they are from Heat. Okay. Also, did you did you have to change your recipes and um, to suit the local palate? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so that that's where the name comes from, Besharam. Like I wanna cook the way I wanna cook, and I'm not gonna change just because you like the way you want then you might as well stay home and eat your own food, I said. Oh, but if you come in to my door and my restaurant in my house, I want to please you what I like to cook. So I do not change the test uh, of what I like to cook. I will go all the way how I want to present to you. But of course, if there is any, we do account dietary if you are, if you give me enough time. But otherwise, my strong thing, I want to enjoy the taste I want to present to you. Okay. Well said. <laughs> do you cook at home too or do you eat at the restaurant? Uh, my children, my, I have a two grown-up children, Raja. Huh? And on my day off, I see the restaurant is a time pressure cooking. It's a time pressure cooking. You have to present the dish and we... When the restaurant opened like five o'clock, you had to flip the chicken, I mean, kitchen, and you had to cook everything ready. When the okay. guests start walking in, it's a lot of pressure. So on my day off, I like to relieve the pressure and not to cook. Yes. So my children do complain uh, that I, my, my Beshram is my baby now. And I think they are right. <laughs> but I, I put everything I have in six days I'm here. And oh. right now, it's only me and my husband. We constantly cook because I don't have any staff. 
so cleaning and mopping the floor to washing the pots to cooking and to go and doing the events is only two of us uh, oh my but so it's a, it's a lot of work it is but i i like to feed people so i guess that's but, how i manage to at the moment oh that's awesome so you're currently closed and you only do takeouts and catering right mm. i am closed uh, like as soon as i'm done with the raja with this class then i had to start preparing to go orders i have a very busy night today and i have like a, i'm feeding say 100 people oh wow so i had to be ready oh so wow so these are some of food you are puffing up if you roll it with the evenly if the heat is right then each and every puri will pop up how has covid affected your business i think there are lots of questions about that i mean obviously you're closed but how are you able to cope with it and how satisfied are you uh, i am so this is one satisfaction that when i was very busy when i was open i couldn't do what i'm doing with you right now right yeah. i was so busy to doing the cooking class was not an option or a time for me mm. but because of the covid mm. all this possibility arise and i'm enjoying it i'm connecting with everybody i mean you said one guest in scotland how yeah. awesome is that i can't <laughs> believe i'm teaching and they can see what i'm doing and this is this is the stuff i couldn't do when i'm inside the restaurant but it's been some days are very emotional so and it's been stretched so long so some days i cry without any reason it's like because all my staff is gone and i'm trying to understand but it's like everybody else we are on a full stop and trying to fight well let's talk a little bit about something that uh, you perhaps would love to say uh, there is a question chef hina could you comment on how you chose the aesthetic design for the restaurant and uh, your work with maria khamar's artwork and ceramics because you know cooking is an art form and you are obviously um, you know you're into other art too absolutely so um, as i get older i realize connecting with the generation connecting with my children what we eat together and that was very important for me even if my parents are here i wanted the place where we all can sit and connect so having this restaurant i wanted to be multi generation where you can bring your parents your children and we can eat under one roof and how i do that so this maria kumar she is a young pop uh, artist she lives in canada but she her art i got connected with and i decided to put on the wall of my restaurant so i can say hey this is the food that we can eat so she has a cunning way of connecting the generation who live outside the india the little little message she has in the plates like she helped me to design my plates and i like that and connecting with the generation is important saying that Uh, raja my restaurant is uh, part of the minnesota street project which is uh, artists this space next to me helps the artists who don't have a space to showcase their art like i am showcasing my food in my space there are artists who wanna express their thoughts on the canvas and the building i am in also doing that and that's why we decided to have this spot and kind of put it all together uh, that's where my passion is so as we as you told me earlier so there is as you enter the restaurant there is a room that is dedicated to art and you display these uh, artists and their art and people have to walk through that to get to your restaurant am i correct so this is not me this is the this is where my restaurant is 
Uh -huh. So the my side door of the restaurant is opens in a building where the Minnesota Street Project is a very huge project, which I can't be in charge or I I don't have the facility, but the investor who uh -huh. helped me with this okay. space and the building is all comes together as a project as a art project, which uh, they give the space to artists to showcase their art at the minimum rate. Or uh, even now with the black artists or diversifying the different artists, like in every industry, there is an ageism, sexism is there. And so many artists could not have the space to showcase their art. But this mission of this Minnesota Street project is to overcome all that. Can you talk a little bit as you're doing your uh, next uh, item, uh, a little bit about uh, those uh, problems that you have faced personally. The ageism and the sexism and the colorism and all that stuff. Are you doing oh, the mango yeah. chutney, Ina? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you can introduce that. Sorry, yes. yes. Mm. Jitesh, oh, yeah. uh, this is our last dish. Uh, this, I, love the ma I love mango. I am, I guess, typical Indian. Mangoes in India, we only found in a season, three months. So we tried to use in a so many ways, like a chutneys, the pickle, the shark, and the sauces, and we preserve for the whole year. But over here, we have a luxury of finding the mangoes nine to 10 months during the year. Uh, so these are the little farm sour mangoes. And I'm putting it together with the whole cumin seeds, lime juice. I'm going to put a little lime zest, salt. Uh -huh. And uh, Raja, this is a jaggery. This is the not, um, not like not a brown, brown sugar. sugar. It's yes. Not, yes. yes, it's not as fine as a canned sugar. I said dirty sugar. And that brings the rawness to the dish. I'm going to blend all these ingredients in little blender. And having that with our bread and with the potato, it's a whole meal on its own. You don't need anything else. Awesome. So I'm going to zest a little bit of my lime mm. zest and put it right there, getting it ready. So, uh, Raja, what was your question? Uh, you touched upon um, the prevalence of um, various isms, yeah. like sexism, yes. etc. So, what did you face during your journey to Beisharam, and how did you overcome those? Uh, it's, it's challenging. Like, have you, I, as a first immigrant, uh, with my age, I wish I'm 20 and with the, because this is a very physical job, it requires a lot of physical stamina, but also uh, it takes a lot out of you. You need to put everything in it. And sometimes with my age, I feel like uh, I may not fit, fit with the other chefs around me because those are very young, very white, very male-based uh, uh, chef community and I come with my sari, I come with my white hair and I, I try to fit in but that's a challenge and I like to take, uh, I want to uh, say that I'm here with the message that uh, even with there is uh, no restriction of who I am or what age I am and I'm here to give you the food I know and the best I know. Awesome. But it's, a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Yes, I'll let you do the dish now. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna put it, I had to stab in the back, but this is my cut mango. Uh -huh. It's very simple chutney, we call it. Mm. The whole cumin seeds. Cumin seeds, salt. Little salt, so citrus. This is the whole cuisine base of Gujarati Raja. The sweet, the sour, the spicy, the yes. sweet, everything in one. And you eat all the taste buds in one bite. Yes. 
this is our jaggery. It's like a little honey. It's sticky. Um, that's, that seems like semi-soft. How did you get it that way? Usually I see jaggery like come in um, either powder or rocks. Yes. Uh, so the, the, you can put it in a microwave at home okay. or you can uh -huh. leave it out in a hot space on the okay. counter and it will melt by itself. Okay. Okay. I'm going to grind this and coming right back. <laughs> oh, you have to go to the back. Uh, yeah. Okay. So right. this is my back. I guess my husband is following me. He's shadowing <laughs> me everywhere. It's a good man. I have a doubt about that sometimes. Oh, don't. <laughs> so if we can't get jaggery, there's a question. What, um, what do we use as a substitute? Uh, sugar. <laughs> You sugar. can always put the brown sugar. sugar or... Brown sugar is better than the white sugar. Okay. So turbinado or something like that, perhaps? Uh, yeah. So we have to make sure um, it, it goes, you know, blending. It mixes easily. Uh -huh. that, but anything dirty with the molasses type of effect will work perfect. Okay. That's good. Cool. This is a very simple dish. You can see the whole cumin, the rawness of the mango. Again, I'm missing my guest, your guest at Niam. They're not able to try this, but I know. it's so, so good. I'm definitely going to make that, yes. And Raja, so this is our puris. Oh, that's awesome. This is our stir fried, I say our version of garlic fries, but it on a shark and a mango chutney. This is how my grandmother made it every day. My grandfather never sit on a table till the fresh chutney is prepared. And she pound it in a hand mortar. But this is the chutney we grow up with every day in our back home. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You want to try for this? Oh. She's going to do the tasting for us. <laughs> I wish. Put I could the... do yes, there you go. He can come in front of the laptop. We can see him. <laughs> they want to see you here for the flying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. They Thank you. That. Yes, they won't get to see you eating. <laughs> Thank you, Varesh. <laughs> awesome. Yes. That is awesome. Any other questions? I'm just trying to go through the questions to see. Uh, lots of compliments, actually. Hinam. Um, I, like, I like to say thank you to Niam for this opportunity and talk about my journey, uh, where I come from. It's very important to, um, to represent myself and my cuisine when the world is changing things like around us every day. And the, when restaurant industry is in a blink of disappearing, especially mom and pop kind of restaurant. So, uh, Having this opportunity, it means a lot to me. And thank you, uh, thank you, Amita, Raja, Jitesh. I am not a tech savvy, so I apologize if you miss me middle of because my iPhone got very hot. Oh, I we understand. All right, thank you, Hina. Uh, Raja, you can conclude. Uh, certainly, I know. I was just trying to go through some questions, but I don't see any new ones. So, okay. Well, Hina, thank you for this lovely demonstration. It was so enjoyable. I wish I were there in person so that I could enjoy that with all my friends and family. And um, uh, we thank our audience today for participating in this program today. And once again, 
We thank US Bank, our sponsors. And um, before we go, one last thing, like all nonprofits, NIAM is also having trouble meeting the demands currently, mainly economic demands. And we, if you really enjoyed the program, would you kindly find it in your heart to donate at, on, at our uh, website? It's www.niam.org. And I would strongly encourage every one of you, and I think everyone who's uh, been present has, um, has been inspired to actually okay, visit yeah. Beisharam the next time you're in San Francisco. Our next program, ne next restaurant to be featured on this series, Taste of India, is Ada in New York. We will be sending you that information. Please tune in. Once again, I thank you all for joining us from me and Niam's behalf. Thank you, Chef Hina. It was delightful.